This is easily the most horrific thing I've ever seen in my entire life. We really hate Russians because they rape women, they rape children, they do such awful things. <laughs> Everything in fire. Why would they bomb this place? There's nothing here. For no reason. Because of here. Moscow says Ukraine has fabricated evidence with the help of Western nations. This place is just absolutely destroyed. As they won't, they will never understand us. Their propaganda tells that our Ukrainian army bombs our own cities. I have family in Russia actually, and she just doesn't believe. Literally just. Russia is lying about Ukraine's destroyed village, and today we're going to uncover the truth and dive deep into the Russian propaganda machine. But first, we had to make our way to my favorite place in Lviv. What's up guys, today we are at one of the most popular restaurants that have been turned into a ghost kitchen to support Ukrainian people. This place supports over 5,000 meals a day to Ukraine. This looks like a restaurant called Pasta Cafe, but it's actually been turned into a ghost kitchen to serve delicious and healthy meals to starving refugees and the military. By the way, I tried the food and... Yo! And how did you have the idea of making food for people? Uh, it was the second day after start the war. Post on Facebook. Uh, we was trying to make uh, like 400 portions in one day. For me, it's a lot. <laughs> but, uh, in the first day, we make more than 1,000 portions of meals. I like volunteering here because you like, know for sure what you're doing is going right to the people who need yeah. it. I met quite a few different volunteers here from around the world, but this one lady had the most gripping story. Which district I think you heard yeah. about this. We were lucky to escape after 10 days. This lady is from freaking Bucha, and if you don't know what that is, let me explain. Ukraine's wartime leader visiting Bucha, the site of alleged atrocities by Russia's retreating army. So about 30 minutes to an hour from Kiev lies these three suburbs, Bucha, Irpim, and Boridanka. During the beginning of the war, these one of the places that were attacked. Russia and Ukraine battled it out, and for a while we didn't know what was happening because no humanitarian effort was allowed in. However, in April, when Russia left the area, it was so freaking horrific that Ukraine invited journalists from around the world to come and document Russia's war crimes. I've covered many conflict zones and witnessed some of the most brutal atrocities of this century. And frankly, Gail, what I saw in Butcher is among some of the worst I've seen. I personally saw evidence of war crimes and these stories can't be staged. Anyways, the war crimes were so horrific that I can't even put them on screen because it's not even allowed on YouTube. However, their stories of women being raped in front of their family members. There was a video on Telegram of a soldier having sex with a five-year-old child. And it just makes you think, I wonder what stuff happened in previous wars before the social media. And finally, we found people tortured in their basements with bags over their heads, hands behind their back, shot in the back of the head. And that's what makes this interview so gripping because this woman was able to escape from Bucha. Being under the crossfire. After that, we came here and started to look for some place where we can be helpful. Can you explain what happened in Bucha? You know, and... uh, it's very difficult to explain what is going on, uh, that people are on the roads, the deaths of their children, of their parents, the rapes. So that's why we are here. One thing I would like to wish these people is not to explain experience the same thing. Never, never, never. People who are born, they are born for life. They are not born for being killed. Now the problem here is Russia has denied everything. They're accusing the Ukrainians and Western media for fabricating all this. I would like to present you to the real facts about Bucha. Not a single local resident has suffered from any violent action. For as long as the town was under the control of the Russian armed forces, Putin took over New Mexico. Напасть на Украину, тем более. Зачем нападать, если там наши жители живут? Произошло? Почему? Почему? Не знаю, по новостям другое говорят. Я не слышу, что Путин ввел войска специально для, для войны. Зеленский все делает, американцы. Да, Киев никто не бомбит, я этому не верю. 
Как-то мне не хочется прямо это говорить, потому что у нас как-то это... So I decided to go to the area, interview people, and really understand what happened. I'm on a six-hour train ride to Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. By the way, going to this area is extremely dangerous. Please do not try this. Debris and rubble everywhere, but the dangerous part, cluster bombs that have been unexploded. One wrong step could explode and kill anybody. And we're seeing this in Laos happen 50 years after the war still today. This is my bunk. Another problem is getting to Kyiv, I had to take the railway system. And Russia is bombing the railway system, so Ukraine cannot get weapons from Lviv all the way to the eastern side. On the train that day was this Ukrainian man teaching me how to set up my bed. Currently 7.50. We were supposed to arrive at 5, but I think we did so many stops for humanitarian aid. It took a little bit longer. This is our new friend. Hello. Why are you headed to Kyiv? My good friend was killed by Russians. I have to say goodbye to him. That is three, three years old daughter. Very unfair, but it's a war in Ukraine. Alright, we've just got to Kyiv. Getting to Kyiv, the capital, we all were checked for our documents to make sure that we weren't collaborating with Russians. But once you get into the city center, it, to be honest, it doesn't even feel like the war's going on. Almost like the city is back to normal, except there's an air siren every day and probably an explosion every week. But that's just how much these things are normalized. I mean, literally one terrorist attack in America, we wage a war in the Middle East. But there's explosions happening every day in the main city. I couldn't come to Ukraine without trying some of the food though. That it's delicious. Alright, I came here four years ago and they sell these. Imagine a donut with a hot dog in the middle. Less than a dollar. So I found someone that was willing to take me all the way to Bucha Irpina Boyanka, but I had to wait a few days till we were able to get some petrol. And so one of my followers connected me to a volunteer org that actually makes camouflage nets for the military. This apparently six by nine meters is big enough to cover tanks. Pretty incredible. <laughs> My personal life story, I spent 14 years living in Russia. I, I used to live in Moscow. Okay. In 2014, when the uh, first part of the war started, um, I left Moscow, I left everything there, the business house, uh, I moved to Kyiv. I, I used to live in this country, and they know uh, who they are. I wouldn't tell they are people, even not animals, but zombies. How are you raising money right now? I, I personally paid uh, by my company, oh, yeah. so uh, I'm spending part of my salary too. So people from my company, they also support. I'm from Mykolaiv and we with my mother like moved out of here because of the missile strike uh, that happened from Kherson, now occupied by Russian army. Whenever they say that these nets are going to the front line, that's crazy, especially when they say like they need them really urgently. Yeah. People's lives are on the line. It's really inspiring because I don't have a job right now. <laughs> First two weeks of war, that was the worst. I would be like crying maybe every couple of days. I am from Russia, but I live in Ukraine. 30 years. 30 years. 30 years. My yeah, husband uh, from Ukraine. My father lives in Russia. And well, my father and his uh, friends, uh, they believe uh, Putin. Uh, here, my family is there, and it was difficult, yes. <laughs> uh, my name is Marina. Today, we are headed to Bucha. Check it out and try to give the surviving people some supplies. So that's the plan. Oh no! Nice to meet you. Oh, nice to meet you. Our English? So bad. Sorry. <laughs> if you look on the other side of the street, you'll see a gas line that is over seven kilometers long. 5 a.m. you woke up for gas and you get it at the last of them. What's up guys? We're currently in Irpin right now. Oh, I, I kind of have no words right now, to be honest. These are all the cars that were destroyed and left here after the Russians invaded this region about 20 kilometers north of Kiev. Let me have a local explain this. What can I say? They say they bring peace. And this is a peace. And some of them they have no home. It was destroyed by Russians. Like, I just don't think it's, this is normal, like seeing anything like this. How old are you? Ten. You're ten years old? Yeah. He said that he is afraid. And uh, it's not normal for everybody and for 
как uh, люди были в это время. Parents want him to see uh, the destruction and to understand. My drivers today are Ira and Bogdan, independent volunteers that travel to these destroyed villages in Ukraine, giving out food, medical supplies, and feeding the stray animals. Yeah, feel. Masha. Masha. We're walking through this village that was destroyed by the Russians. Vietnam, Vietnam, oh, yeah. Vietnam, da? Yes. Спасибо вам. We spent the next few hours delivering supplies to these different villages. People were kind enough to walk us through some of their homes. Is this your home? Uh -huh. And it was so hard to see that, that these people didn't really have that much, and they've seemingly lost everything. Tsar was in the army and when the Russian no, the army entered, they saw his military vest yeah. and they want to shoot his father. So he was uh, like this from uh, dying. Yeah. Where's they his will son? Be dead. His son's dead? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so.